Imagine waking up one day to find that the air you breathe, the very essence of life, is slowly killing you. This isn't the plot of a dystopian novel, it's a harsh reality for millions of people around the world. Today, we're diving deep into a silent killer that's all around us, air pollution. But here's the shocking part. It's not just a byproduct of industrial progress or urbanization. There's a hidden truth, an unsettling connection between elite power structures, government policies, and the toxic air that fills our cities. Are you ready to uncover the dark secrets behind this invisible disaster? Welcome to our investigation into one of the most pressing and deadly issues of our time. This isn't just another video about air pollution. We're exposing the hidden forces that are making our air more polluted and chemically hazardous every day. And the surprising part is that the main media is hiding these investigations from you by not telling you about them. They want you to remain ignorant because their pockets are being filled by the big chemical industries. Let's start with some hard-hitting examples. In Beijing, China, the air quality often reaches hazardous levels, with smog so thick it obscures the skyline. In Los Angeles, USA, residents are frequently warned about smog alerts due to high levels of pollutants. In London, UK, the great smog of 1952 might seem like ancient history, but the city's air quality still fails to meet safe standards. Even Paris, France, grapples with high levels of particulate matter, leading to a visible haze over the city. Think about the families who have lost loved ones to respiratory diseases, the children growing up with asthma, and the elderly who suffer in silence. This isn't just about statistics, it's about real people, real lives, and real pain. How did we get here? And why does it seem like nothing is changing? Here's where it gets even more disturbing. Many of the policies and decisions contributing to this crisis are driven by powerful elites and governments prioritizing profit over people. From lax environmental regulations to the promotion of industries that spew toxins into the air, there's a deliberate disregard for human health. You might be wondering, why isn't more being done to stop this? The answer lies in a tangled web of corporate interests, political influence, and economic pressures. In this video, we'll explore how these forces work together to create an environment where air pollution thrives and why it's so difficult to combat it. By the end of this video, you'll understand the true scale of the air pollution crisis and its deadly impact. The hidden mechanisms through which elites and governments contribute to this disaster real stories of communities devastated by toxic air, what we can do to protect ourselves and demand change. So let's dive in. But before that, make sure you've subscribed to our channel. Section one, the global catastrophe of air pollution. All right, let's take a world tour to see the extent of this silent killer. First stop, Beijing, China. Ever heard of the term airpocalypse? It's not an exaggeration. Imagine a city where the air is so thick with smog that you can't see a few meters ahead. People there walk around with masks, but here's the kicker, those masks barely filter out the deadliest particles. Next, we head over to Los Angeles, USA. LA is not just famous for Hollywood, it's infamous for its smog. Think about those beautiful sunsets you see in photos, that orange glow, part of it comes from pollutants in the air. On bad days, officials issue smog alerts, basically telling people to stay inside if they want to avoid breathing in poison. Let's cross the Atlantic to London, UK. The great smog of 1952 might seem like ancient history, but the city's air quality is still a problem. The smog might not be as visible today, but the microscopic particles are still there, silently damaging lungs and hearts. And finally, let's not forget Paris, France. The city of light is often cloaked in a veil of pollution. High levels of particulate matter float through the air, making it hazardous to breathe, especially for children and the elderly. Now, let's get into the numbers. According to the World Health Organization, air pollution kills an estimated 7 million people worldwide every year. That's more than the population of some small countries. And the economic costs? Absolutely staggering. In the US alone, air pollution costs billions in healthcare and causes lost productivity. Some of the world's most polluted cities have air quality levels that are 10 times higher than what's considered safe. 10 times. Section two, the human cost of air pollution. Let's make it personal. Imagine a family in Beijing parents watching their child struggle with asthma every single day. Or an elderly man in LA who can't walk to his favorite coffee shop without gasping for air. These aren't just numbers, these are real lives, real people enduring real pain. Think about growing up in a city where playing outside could send you to the hospital, or living your golden years confined indoors because the air is toxic. The emotional toll is immense. Parents constantly worry about their kids' health, and the elderly suffer in silence. It's not just about physical health impacts, it's about stress, anxiety, and a diminished quality of life. Section 3, The Harsh Truth Behind Air Pollution Now. Here's where it gets really interesting. You might think that air pollution is just an unfortunate byproduct of modern life. But what if I told you there's a darker side? Powerful elites and governments are making decisions that keep this crisis alive. Why? Because it's profitable. Industries that pump out pollutants are making a killing. And guess what? Where there's money, there's influence. Let's talk about regulations or the lack thereof. 
Many countries have weak environmental laws that let industries pollute without consequences. Even in places with strict regulations, enforcement is often a joke. Why? Because it's all about profits over people. The industries have lobbyists, and these lobbyists have politicians in their pockets. Ever wondered why more isn't being done to stop this? It's because of a tangled web of corporate interests and political influence. Industries lobby hard to keep regulations weak. Politicians, who often benefit from these industries, turn a blind eye. It's a vicious cycle that keeps the air dirty and people sick. Here are some examples of the chemical industries that are behind this and how they use their money and power to close the case. Number one, DuPont and Teflon USA. DuPont's production of Teflon in Parkersburg, West Virginia, led to the release of perfluoroctanoic acid PFO, a chemical linked to numerous health issues. When lawsuits emerged, DuPont used its vast resources to settle cases privately, thus avoiding public scrutiny and stricter regulations. They also funded scientific studies to downplay the risks associated with PFO. Number two, BASF and Ludwig Schaffen explosion, Germany. In 2016, an explosion at BASF's chemical plant in Ludwig Schaffen, Germany, resulted in significant emissions of hazardous pollutants. BASF managed to limit the fallout by using their financial power to compensate affected individuals and negotiate favorable media coverage. They also exerted pressure on local authorities to prevent a thorough investigation into the plant's safety practices. Number three, Monsanto and PCB contamination USA. Monsanto's production of polychlorinated biphenyls PCBS led to widespread environmental contamination. Despite evidence of their harmful effects, Monsanto used aggressive legal tactics and lobbying to delay regulatory action and minimize their financial liability. They funded studies to cast doubt on PCB toxicity and influence regulatory bodies to prevent stringent bans. Number four, Dow Chemical and Dioxin Pollution USA. Dow Chemical's production processes release dioxins, potent carcinogens into the environment. When communities affected by dioxin pollution sought justice, Dow employed extensive legal and public relations campaigns to discredit scientific findings and intimidate plaintiffs. Their influence helped them avoid severe penalties and stringent regulatory oversight. Section four, what can be done? So what can we do about it? First off, we can protect ourselves. Use air purifiers in your home, wear masks on high pollution days, and stay informed about air quality levels in your area. These might seem like small steps, but they can make a big difference. But personal protection isn't enough. We need to demand change, advocate for stricter environmental regulations, support clean energy initiatives, and reduce your carbon footprint. Every little bit helps. Communities around the world are already fighting back. Local initiatives have successfully reduced pollution levels in some places. On a global scale, organizations are pushing for stronger international agreements to tackle air pollution. To get involved in these efforts, your voice matters. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and let this silent killer continue to claim lives? Or are you going to take action, protect yourself, demand change, and get involved? Together, we can make a difference. That's all for today. I hope you find this video informative and knowledgeable. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. Thanks for watching.